Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas Pro 18 tutorial for you. And today we're gonna learn about the best 1080p render settings for YouTube. And just in case you didn't know, Vegas Pro 18 is also included in Vegas Post, which is a post-production software that includes Vegas Pro, Vegas Image, and Vegas Effects. All of all that information and affiliate links posted in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump right into Vegas 18. All right, so we have Vegas Pro 18 open right now. Let's just say you have your project totally done and you're ready to render. We're gonna go up to File, go down to Render As, and the mode we're gonna choose is Magic's Intermediate. Now we have a bunch of options up here as well, and I'll explain why Magic's Intermediate is the best. Magic's Intermediate is their answer to Apple's ProRes. Apple's ProRes is a high quality rendering solution that they use for movies to create extremely crisp details and use the least amount of banding. If you don't want to look up what those words mean, basically it's very high quality. This rendering option also utilizes your graphics card to help you encode so you can render faster as well if you have hardware acceleration turned on. So once selected, just choose the first one and we're gonna customize it. Click on it, go down to Customize Template, we always want include video to be checked, unless for some reason you don't want video in your file and you just want audio. If we go to frame size, it has predetermined frame sizes already set here for the most common resolutions, but if you wanted to go something custom, you can do custom frame size and change it right here. Just a quick note, the maximum resolution you can change it to in this format is 5120 by 2160. If you try to go any higher, it'll automatically drop you down to that. So if we do 80, 96 we're gonna see it drops to 5120. But we're just gonna be choosing 1080p. So we click on custom frame size and we go down to HD. Make sure allow source is unchecked because if you have different types of resolution videos you made in your video, it could adjust the resolution. You don't want that. Under profile, if you click it, we have some options. We have intermediate 422 proxy and goes all the way down to intermediate 444XQ. These numbers mean chroma subsampling. And basically that means color sharpness. By default, most things are in the 420, so choosing 422 is usually your best option because that's more than what you're recording with already. Choosing 444 is actually not recommended unless you are recording in 444 Chroma subsampling. Otherwise, you're going to get a big file for no reason. If you choose proxy, your average megabit is going to be about 40 megabits per second. If you choose LT, your average megabit is going to be about 70. If you choose just regular 422, your average megabit is going to be about 105 megabits per second. And if you choose high quality, your average megabit is going to be 150 megabits per second. And this is all based off of 23.96 frames per second. If you wanted to record in 60 frames per second, your megabit is going to go up. So for 60 megabits per second, if you choose proxy, you're going to be looking at about 140 megabits per second project. LT is about 220 megabits per second. Regular 422 is about 300 megabits per second and high quality is about 440 megabits per second. So if you're choosing 60 frames per second, you wanna make sure you choose proxy. Anything above that, you're not gonna notice a difference. The only difference you'll notice is the bigger file size. But if you have a 24 frame per second video, if it's a video game montage, you'll probably wanna stick with LT or regular 422. If it's DSLR footage and kind of like a short film, you'll wanna go with high quality. Going back to frame rate, we can drop this down and choose various frame rates. The most common ones are 23.976 or 60 frames per second. For field order, this is usually going to stay at none progressive scan. But depending on the type of camera you're using, if you record it in 1080i or you're using interlacing footage, then you'll want to change it to upper or lower field first to get better results. But most people are going to choose none. Pixel aspect ratio, we want to keep this at 1. If you choose 1.333, it's going to be stretched wide, and we don't want that. Output color space is default, and we won't need to change that for anything. You have the option to disable hardware acceleration if for some reason you want to do that and use specifically your processor to do all this. Now let's go down to audio tab. We click on that. We want to make sure include audio is checked unless you don't want it otherwise. Sample rate, we'll keep this at 48. We can't change it to anything else. Let's go down to the project tab now. From here, we go to video rendering quality. I like to keep mine on best. Stereoscopic 3D mode, keep use project settings right there. We don't want to change any of this unless you know exactly what kind of 3D settings you need to change. But usually we'll keep it at default. For color space, we're going to click this, and I personally like to bring this and drop it down to Rec. 709, which is the average color space you see in pretty much everything. By selecting this one, I ensure that I'm using the most accurate colors. So I like clicking Rec. 709, and for color range, you have the option of going limited or full color range. This, again, depends on how you recorded your footage, and one may look better than the other, so I would recommend starting with limited, render a little bit of it, see how it looks, and if you think it needs more color or more depth to it, 
choose full, render a little bit more, and then compare the two. But most of the time, you're going to want to do limited default. So we're going to click this. And after that, you can rename this whatever you want, and then hit save, and you're good to go. Now going back to the other render options, I'm going to hit cancel here. And if we want to look at Magic's ABC, this also is a good alternative to rendering, but it isn't as high quality as Magic's Intermediate. You may see a little bit of banding or a little bit of pixelation when you're rendering, but that depends on various aspects, how heavy your files are, if you're using hardware acceleration or not, things like that. So you can choose Magic's ABC and choose one of the options that match whatever your project is, but you're here to find the best settings, and that is Magic's Intermediate. And on a side note, Magic's HEVC is their high efficiency video codec, and this one allows you to render using the newest codec to make you have smaller file sizes, but also retain quality. The only downside to using this one is that it takes a long time to render. And also sometimes, depending on your hardware, if you have AMD or NVIDIA graphics, you can see weird little pixelations or weird color splashes, and I prefer not to use this one. So again, if you want to get the best quality rendering, use Magic's Intermediate. And there you have it. If this tutorial helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And if you want to support the channel through Patreon, you can do that as well. The link is in the description below. So thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all of my super subscribers up there at the top. Be sure to check out their channels for some awesome content.